It's probably the most famous bar in New York City that you've never heard of. A place steeped with history, modern and old. And you're not going to believe who's performed there. It's Nears Tavern. It's probably one of the last places you'd expect to see a bar, but it's been there for generations. Tucked away on a quiet residential street in Woodhaven, Nears Tavern strangely doesn't look out of place. Perhaps that's its appeal, a true neighborhood bar that's been word of mouth its entire life. If you really come here and sit down and talk to these people, you start to realize that this is just a tight-knit community and eventually what happens is that they start to share their stories. You start to become part of the Nears family as well. And what a hidden gem. It is the oldest bar in Queens and one of the oldest in the city, if not the entire country. We know this bar is old, but we don't know how old it is at this moment, and we may never know. The general accepted date is that it was opened around 1855, maybe 1853. We have a number of books that say it was opened in 1838, but there's no question that it's old. Whatever its age, this little tavern on the corner began as the Blue Pump Room, named unceremoniously after a nearby water pump. It was built in this out-of-the-way place for good reason. For right across the street once lay one of the preeminent horse racing tracks in America, the Union Course. Now covered with houses and streets, not a trace of it remains. And the Union Course race track started in 1821. And it had some of its most famous races by 1823. In 1823, it had a race where they say that 70,000 people came, that the city of New York was empty because so many people had come to see this race between a northern horse and a southern horse. The track was a good neighbor, keeping the tavern packed with patrons. It was never a, a high-end establishment. I think that this bar was the place where the stable boys and the, you know, the riders would come. By the 1890s, the racetrack was gone, but Nears carried on through the decades, reinventing itself as a social hall. And in those days, you had these ballrooms, and there were ballrooms for people of uh, the neighborhood. So you'd have all sorts of events. It wasn't just a bar, but it was like a social gathering, and people would perform. Among the entertainers, musicians, vaudevillians, and one actress in particular. It's well known that Mae West performed here and got her start in this place. This neighborhood, Woodhaven, was her home, and in fact, she lived just like three blocks down and a block over. That's her house. Even after she got her start, she would come to this bar and she would bring her friends. Those friends included even W.C. Fields, who once performed here. But Fields and West weren't the only colorful people to visit. Upstairs was a hotel rumored to do double duty as a brothel. Beginning after the war, really, it was in the Nears family until the 1960s. And in the 1960s, they sold it, and it was sold again and sold again and sold again. And what happened is it, um, it began to deteriorate. The bar then lingered on until it caught the eye of a certain movie director, Martin Scorsese. And for some of you, he is the reason Nears looks so familiar. For you see, Scorsese shot several key scenes here for his classic film, Goodfellas. And when he came, he loved the place, and he said that he was going to shoot his next movie here. And uh, he was going to call it w The Wise Guys, which eventually, you know, became The Goodfellas. To this day, movie fans come by for a look-see, and they are not disappointed. Everything that was in the movie is still here. Unfortunately, its movie connection wasn't enough to keep the then-named Union Course Tavern afloat. It struggled on until just a couple of years ago when a group of investors came in, committed to preserving this great piece of history. We found a lot of interesting things here, old coal chutes, old barrels, I don't know if it was from Prohibition days. It was just exciting to be here and to work on this place. Not only did we have the ballroom in the back, but one of the very first bowling alleys in the history of the United States was put in, and st is now a studio, but the remnants of it, the pieces of it are still around. And Other vintage pieces preserved include period furniture and gas lamps that have been refitted for electricity. But the best item saved is possibly the only one of its kind in the city, 
And much to their customers' appreciation, it's used every day. The beer system that we have is the, um, the original beer system you know, that was put in more than 100 years ago. So before electricity, before that, they would put the ice and, and the beer would cool as it went through the coils and came out the, the bottle. And yeah, it turned out that Nears had a reputation for having the nicest, coldest beer in town. Ice cold beer isn't the only thing keeping Nears open. Today's owners, without even trying, have brought it back to its roots as a kind of modern day social hall. For this isn't just a bar to drink at, but a place that serves multi-purposes. There are now renovated apartments upstairs, a martial arts school in one of the original ballrooms, and even a recording studio, which has a history of its own. I had recorded most of uh, Salt and Pepper's records here, uh, most of Kid and Play's records, and yeah, I, I recorded Kiss, I recorded uh, Anthrax, uh, we recorded uh, Eminem here. We recorded Sean Paul here, yeah, so, and the list goes on and on and on. <laughs> Perhaps taking a cue from Mae West, David now uses Nears as a place to showcase his new talent. Today, Nears is much like the rest of the city, a place that reinvents itself over and over again. Now, Nears has live music several nights a week. You can check out their website for more details. They also occasionally hold Goodfellas nights, where movie fans come in and discuss the film. <laughs> 